Welcome everyone to the last episode in the Simon Go Back series. And I am very, very happy to say we kicked Simon back home. Uh, it has been a wonderful time following the series, both here at Clueless Insanity and in general, the, all the matches. As always, joining me today is Vignesh, Vishal, Amog, Abhi and Ani. You had a great game. I lied to all of you in saying that there was no contest or context to this uh, particular ODI series, but it has proved all of us wrong. It has <laughs> just been a treat to watch. And whenever number one goes against number two, I think uh, we, should, we should just close our eyes and watch the game. Whether it's the World Cup Finals, whether it is three matches that are three years before the next World Cup, it doesn't matter. Anyway, uh, let's get into the game. Uh, let's get your first thoughts, uh, Vignesh. Let's, uh, uh, it was it was it was a uh, it was a marvelous game. I think so. Each each team was passing the baton to the other team. You know, India started off well, and then they gave the they gave England a chance to come in, and then England gave India the chance to come back into the game. And India was like, no, I want you also to come back into the game. So it was like each of them were playing. You know. Passing the parcel until yeah. finally it came into India's hand and India won the game. But I think so. It was it was a great advertisement for one day cricket. Yeah, the fielding was a little bit of a doubt, but other than that, it was a wonderful game to watch. Hi sir, it felt like uh, England just kept giving us catches and we just kept dropping them. It was <laughs> it was like too much uh, love that was in exchange between the two teams. They've been in the bubble for too long. Uh, anyway. Uh, let's go further. Uh, Abhi, um, a word on, on the pitch, uh, how it has fared. We have seen three matches, all pretty much 600 plus games, except the first where uh, England uh, crumbled. But your thoughts? Uh, we were, anyone would love to see uh, fours and sixes. So I guess, uh, and especially in India, we are known for uh, flat tracks. So there was no no surprises in that regard and especially uh, um, with the three ODA series you would want to see a lot of boundaries and success code and with no crowds also so I felt uh, uh, there was no surprises there but uh, in that regard uh, uh, we bowled pretty well in patches <laughs> I think uh, that is okay. true we, I, yeah. the, yeah, it's just the way these teams are set up. It seems that uh, England are more like the steady horse that is always chugging at the same rate. They start at seven, they end at seven. India is more like uh, uh, an exponential curve where they, they go slow, they go then quicker, and then in the end, they just give that boost. Uh, yeah, so uh, given the context of how these two teams play the type game, uh, Ani, what was uh, things that really caught your attention and how they approached both batting heavy teams? Um, any any noteworthy mentions that you felt? Uh, I think uh, you know England uh, follows that uh, uh, single pattern uh, as you told, but uh, with India it was uh, a mix of everything. At least in the last match, uh, India probably tried to be. A bit more aggressive at the start. You could see uh, Rohit and uh, Dhawan uh, uh, trying to play with that more intent. So uh, the mm -hmm. thought process was like to have a bigger score on board, at least after the second match. Uh, uh, so uh, so mentally, probably India thought we needed more runs. Uh, if not for uh, uh, Virat and uh, uh, Rahul getting out uh, for quite cheaply in between. We, uh, we would have probably got even more, or even in the end, if uh, uh, Hardik and um, uh, Rishabh Pant. So you could see, like from the twenty seventh over itself, like uh, they are batting as if it's the slog overs. So, mm -hmm. so I, that we don't uh, generally get to see with uh, India's batting, at least in the middle overs. So there mm -hmm. was a uh, complete uh, uh, shift uh, in the way we are batting here. Yeah. Uh, that is a very good point. For for the first time in uh, recent memory that I've seen India go gung-ho in the power play. 
I think that they have a different uh, worldview in compared to other teams. But it was nice to see. Uh, sometimes it may you may need to do this, uh, especially if you're chasing a really high score. So, yeah, it was nice to see. Um, in general, Amoga, how how happy are you with how a middle order has been performing throughout? through thick and thin always you can you can rely on them more and more it appears uh, have we reached that stage where now if our top three start performing well we can hope that the day when the three don't india will still score 330 first of all um, before i answer your question i would like to say that i've got a few more gray hairs uh, you know watching this three odi series i mean t20 <laughs> was fun but uh, the odi series was definitely you know uh, too you know it was probably too intense it was too intense and it's a format which i like the longer formats uh, so the odi was really a uh, very intense though it was you know significantly not that relevant um, it was probably the most intense of the uh, formats that uh, we have played and to answer your question I, i would say the middle order was the difference between england and india winning uh, Mm. all the matches mm. um, if you see the middle order was the reason why we managed to get 300 plus and uh, you know in the end uh, england never managed to uh, the matches that they failed to reach our uh, target was because the middle order didn't of course barring uh, one of the finest innings i've seen in a recent time sam karan was you. like uh, literally did a dhoni uh, i would say but as it was bad luck that he couldn't pull it off it was uh, yeah uh, it was one of the best innings i've seen I, i i in in general it just made a match out of uh, something that would have been a one sided affair otherwise and it gave even me a couple of uh, gray hairs i'm sure uh, anyway uh, let's go a bit further um i have not remembered the last time when india has fielded four paces or probably five paces and only one spinner <laughs> is is this uh, boasting that we do of how good our pace bowling has become has it com- completely you know instead of making the bowling attack becomes better has it has it kind of taken away the the depth we had in uh, in spinning uh, vishal what do you feel about our white ball progress with uh, in spin I think uh, it was a tactical change for this game the third uh, third ODI so uh, after after we got smashed in the second ODI where both the spinners went for a lot of runs um, uh, I think it was in the back of the mind uh, that uh, we need to play an extra seamer and that's what Kohli also mentioned in the toss that Natarajan has come in for a tactical change and uh, and we were up for this match so if you see uh, with regards to this match we made a couple of uh, tactical changes in the bowling department first starting off with natrajan uh, brings in an extra dimension and uh, in the sense that he's a left arm seamer and uh, bhuvneshwar bowling from the other end and the second most important tactical change which was very crucial was bringing rishabh pant uh, to the stumps uh, that, uh, that that helped us get the uh, pesto out Yeah. so uh we we changed it a bit and i think uh, england uh, was a bit surprised as well because when you're up to the st- when the keeper is up to the stumps and bhuvneshwar kumar is swinging the ball both ways it's difficult to maneuver the swing and play with the line of the to the line of the ball so uh that's how basto got out and i think it's only in this series and in this specific game that we played one spinner in mm-hmm. our plans uh in for the future games we will still have two spinners playing so uh yeah so coming back to your question it was just this match and looking at the opposition and the different matchups i think it was the it was the best way forward uh, from us playing uh, extra seamer in this game okay uh i i i take the uh, point on tactical uh, or strategic choices and matchups and all these things but the the question is at a point we were uh, we had this combination of uh, kulcha where we had kuldeep and uh, chahal just spinning their webs every single match especially leading to the 2019 world cup uh, where you were assured that in in the middle overs they could just get your wicket every so often uh, yeah the the question is has this combination 
suddenly gone away what has uh, now changed with indian attitude towards uh, spinners vignesh that i want to dive a bit deeper because it seems that we are already seeing signs of it it's still not crisis stage but who's that new bowler who's that new spinner i mean uh, who's who's going to come there and uh, take the world by storm i think do so we, we, need we to do rely need to on... look at yeah i don't think so we need to look at new spinners uh, i think so what we're missing is that that x factor in terms of the thought process i think so as a spinner you just need to be smart you need to outthink the batsman whatever the condition uh, because yeah you're never going to get turning tracks uh, you know any time in odi cricket it's so going to be a rarity where you're going to get the ball to spin and turn viciously like how you have in test match so you need to be very smart in how you you vary your lengths vary the the release point and all of that and also to study the batsman i think what mm. are the current generation of bowlers are missing is is that you know being that wily fox trying to outsmart the batsman by by estimating what the batsman is going to do you get hit for yeah. sixes and four it's fine that's what you know are the, the great spinners of of our past like bishan singh bedi and uh, bs chandrashekar and all used to do they used to basically fool the batsman you know give them the scoring shots and then entice them into making that mistake and i think so that is what our our spinners are missing and and that's something dhoni was was really uh, you know good at at adding this this value from behind the stumps and now with him missing it's like the brain has gone out of the spin department uh, and i think so it, it you know our spinners just need to switch on their mind and you know start looking at it from a tactical point of view uh, and and i think so we will start flourishing quite well i think so rohit is a good spinners captain it's nice it's good to have him beside the spinners virat kohli is always a, a fast bowlers captain he can always set fields he can always uh, i agree i bowler. agree with you but i thought that virat kohli initially was also uh, it seems someone has dropped out uh, apologies for that some bad internet here and there um but initially i felt that uh, kohli was a risk spinners captain i just thought he preferred the risk spin in the shot in the limited overs game I'm i think so more than more than a risk spinners uh, captain he was an attacking captain and <laughs> because risk spin is is an attacking option rather than finger spin he always went for the attacking option with with uh, kuldeep and chahal but in terms of of trying to uh, you know uh, provide that the tactical new uh, nows to to the bowlers he he's lacking a little bit as as a as a as a captain and i think so that's why maybe rohit sharma can help a lot he seems to have that okay while while he's he seems to be flabbergasted by by spinners i think as a captain he's got a really astute mind and he knows how to handle different kinds of bowlers and i think so having him you know speaking to these bowlers on a regular basis on the field will de- will definitely help them develop that side of the game okay um abhi you you can add yeah. no i just wanted to throw up some stat uh, regarding kulcha uh, so the last time when either uh, uh, kuldeep or uh, chal did not feature an indian playing 11 was way back in uh, 2017 uh, so that shows 84 uh, games yeah 84 yeah. games yeah. yeah so that shows uh, how uh, we relied on these two uh, but as you mentioned uh, i i this opens up the debate to get in someone like uh, ravichandran ashwin into the 50 over format he is a proven customer is good with the white ball i know uh, w- what virat spoke about uh, washington sundar uh, regarding uh, that was more to do with t20s but i still feel ashwin should be part of uh, say odi setup yeah uh, j- just to add a point uh, dilip vengsarkar uh, made a statement uh, recently that uh, uh ash like af- uh, after the just before the start of the third game after the second game he told like ashin should be brought in right away if i if i am the selector i would get him right yeah. right away for the next match so that like uh, ashin is aging with wine so <laughs> uh, he is yeah. a right candidate back to the 50 over setup yeah uh, he uh, he dilip beg sarkar has some astute mind he he also chose kohli at some point so i'm sure he he knows what he's talking about <laughs> <laughs> anyway uh gentlemen um moving further from the spin talk let's go to the pace uh, bowling battery that india employed today um i mean it, although we don't have now this in the middle overs uh, somebody who's going to give us the wicket in 
is Kuldeep for Chahal. He seemed to have found a new guy in Shardul Thakur. It's, uh, it, he just has something in him uh, uh, and all these variations, I guess. Uh, what do you make of it? How how does he get wickets out of full tosses? Like, <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's probably, uh, as you mentioned, it's more to do with the variations. So... Uh, the only non-variation ball is a full toss and uh, maybe that's a good way to pick wickets. <laughs> but yeah, uh, on a serious note, uh, uh, it's very important to have such kind of variations because uh, you saw what happened to someone like Prasip Krishna who just has a raw pace and uh, he bowls uh, the same line and length and he was taken for... Uh, I know a lot of runs in all the, all the three games. So variations really help, and uh, and that's why uh, um, someone like Natarajan is also very successful, mm. even though he's uh, very young at the international level. But uh, any bowler with variation will uh, stay longer in shorter format. Nice. Okay, that's a that's a nice uh, nice way to put it uh, i would say but uh, to be honest that's that's just to add you know that's that's to all we because we have been uh, uh, discussing also about debutants and i think so for for a lot of debutants that that have performed quite well upon entering into the um, you know the indian team they should also remember that you can be found out you know at any point uh, at the start of your career and it's very important to to learn from that and improve on it you know, and not, not dwell on, on the past glory. So I think so while the debutants have done really well, I think it's very important for them to understand their game and take it to the next level. Also, they'll just be left behind. Yeah, uh, it will take time. Of course, uh, yeah, there's still, there's a reason there are still debutants. Um, the the skill set, let's say, of uh, Rishabh Pant and uh, Hardik Pandya to, to come down at the end and smack took already India three years to develop. Uh, as an alternative for what uh, MS Dhoni himself used to do. Um, I need the last question to tie this match and to die, tie this uh, series in general. Um, our, our approach with the bowling was something we already mentioned, how we got wickets in the start. Also a bit on uh, our death bowling uh, approach. You have your thoughts on that? How we handled it? This is a question to me, sorry. Yeah, yeah, yeah. On our death bowling approach, uh, well, I can say in the last match, we got it right. <laughs> Natarajan, uh, uh, whether he bowled well in the entire match, at least the last two overs which he bowled was very good. And uh, I think that won us the game. So, mm-hmm. that ability to hit the Yorkers at the right time. I think Shardul Takur, as uh, Abhi mentioned, uh, and uh, Vignesh has also been uh, uh, talking about him uh, for quite some time so these days. So I think with all those variations, I, uh, these are the bowlers. Like, yes, you can rely on them towards the depth. Of course, we have a, a Bumra at the back who is not playing. I mean, but uh, so uh, fairly, we are good. I, someone like a Prasid could not bowl at the depth, but I feel like uh, uh, we are getting better there. So as the uh, with each tournament, we are uh, uh, finding our way through, and uh, I think it's a good sign to see. Um, but yeah, there's always room for improvement. One, one player he missed out was Bui. Bui was outstanding. Yeah, of course. Of course that, yeah. that 47 so also was a, a crucial one uh, in the in the context of the game. I think that summarizes in general this last match. To to talk about the ODI series. Um, uh, I have four questions, one to each one of you now. Um, uh, Vignesh, your thoughts on uh, Virat Kohli, the captain? In the series? Uh, Virat Kohli, uh, as a captain, was very animated on the field. And I think so. he, he made the right decisions in terms of uh, bringing in new blood, playing uh, players who, who could make it into the T20 squad, who are like fringe players. And possibly could be, you know, and and players who are also uh, who had lost confidence. My, they had the 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 timing, but they lost confidence. So I think he got it right, and he uh, he he made a match out of this. I think so. He also showed that this Indian team can come back within games. I think so. Over the past five six years, we have lost that ability 
if we just lose we we lose badly uh, and i think so this three odi series and even the t20 has shown that we can we can improve within games and we can find that additional gear from somewhere to to you know uh, get us to winning ways so so i think he, uh he he's now got a team that that represents him i think so there was a lot of 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 dhoni's sort of uh, you know uh, a shadow over, over some of the players but now the team that is coming in is is now entirely his team and you can so slowly see, see the influence and hopefully you know by the 2023 world cup uh, he would uh, lift that that trophy in india <laughs> i i hope he does that in uh, 2021 uh, and yeah. <laughs> let's uh vishal the next question is uh, no crowd did you see that as an influence is that a reason why maybe sometimes we just let go of the hand on the uh, on the news uh, your thoughts uh, yeah quite quite possible uh, so these are uh, different times altogether uh, and uh, as you mentioned the crowd did play a role uh, not being there in the stadiums we saw what difference it made uh, when it was allowed in a couple of test matches and a couple of t20s yeah. so it made a huge difference for us uh, in the test series and it does for any home side and uh, the crowd helps the team to stay in the groove and give that extra uh, kick from the back side to perform well in any sort of situation so the crowd did play a difference but i think at the end of the day it was uh, it was a series between two high class teams and uh, Uh, there were 22 individuals performing on the park not to mention uh, the umpires also had a very good series in my opinion especially nitin menon so uh, yeah the crowd did play a difference but uh, not that much uh, in my opinion uh, the i take that point i was just wanting to uh, yeah say a bit uh, on the umpires myself later on but since you already brought it i think uh, we require a great salute to to all the three uh, officials even to jagal shrinath who has uh, uh, officiated uh, in each and every one of these uh, uh, outings it's been tough going for all those uh, uh, players as well as definitely these umpires who have been in the talk in the limelight more than the players sometimes they never get a day of rest they never get a ball of rest so it's been it's been amazing to see what what they have done and uh, the respect that is being poured to them and uh, i hope that nitin menon gets his, to live his dream of uh, officiating in a national so yeah. uh anyway um let's let's go f- uh, further and uh, discuss uh, two other points uh, abhi uh, although india has been caught by not taking the catches multiple times the seem to not lose matches the question is is it becoming a kind of a hit and miss is it is it like a like a toying course every time there's a, a catch in the air where they take spectacular ones but they seem to also drop dollies and what can what do you think on this in this current culture that india has that they're not safe they're great but they're not safe yes uh, it also depends on uh, the batsman so whenever a batsman gets an opportunity maybe they uh, yet these days uh, it's the other way around right so uh, it's not like if there's an uh, catch dropped they are going to score a big daddy 100 that's not happening uh, with most of the players so uh i guess uh, that is why it is helping even though we are dropping catches i guess uh, we are finding those opportunities time and again and but yeah we'll have to work on uh, the simple catches not the <laughs> difficult ones difficult ones are like easier to take these days than the simple ones so some yeah. not just india uh, across the globe i guess uh, that's the problem right now Yeah, it's like in it's like they have practiced for iit they've cracked it but they lo- uh, they failed at the local driving test it's uh, it's very uh, yeah. interesting yeah. Uh, uh, akshar just to add a point see uh, it's not like uh, we are uh, uh, dropping catches only under the lights uh, 
or only the audio or anything. It's like across all the formats, be it tests or anything. So, uh, and uh, uh, also that uh, uh, the uh, you mentioned that we are not losing the matches, but uh, here it would have almost co cost us the match. So you never know. So it's uh, so if there's one area for improvement, uh, I think it should be the catches, not the fielding. Fielding has been great, but the catches, yes. It might be just to add as 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 a possible reason for this. I think they should not give any reason for dropping catches. Uh, but then maybe a possible reason is that because the you know players have been out for a year almost, mm -hmm. and and then to come back sometimes you can take those great catches because it just reflects, and sometimes it sticks. But then the easy catches which you do day in day out when you don't have that rhythm of taking those on a regular basis, sometimes those those catches slip out. And I think so. It's just about getting into that rhythm again to, to be able to be consistent in in that side of the game. And that's why I think so. It's happening across the globe, not only in India. I, I agree. Uh, it's oh, been just been at one point. Uh, I yeah. guess uh, as a fielder, when uh, recently uh, when I was playing cricket, I dropped a easier catch, but took a, uh, a great one. Okay, it's more to do with the mindset. You know, you have the ability to take a greater catch when you see a easier catch coming towards you you probably relax so yeah. that's something which might cost i'm not sure it happened with me but maybe uh, it might be the same reason with the indian team players also yeah. Yeah, we, yeah, we, maybe if i can time. sorry yeah maybe if i can add a point here so right. yeah well i think it's uh, something got to do with uh, how the modern game is played as well so if you see in t20 and 50 over cricket a lot of a lot of times the batsman hit the ball flat right so the catch but the catches that get dropped are the ones which are higher in trajectory or rather higher in height so there's more time for the fielder to be under the ball and i think that's sort of playing a role uh not the exact reason we cannot give excuses for dropping any sort of catches but if we see yesterday take yesterday for example the catches which came flat and fast were taken and the ones which have which were on the top and higher trajectory that those were the ones that were dropped and even adil rashi dropped one in the first innings mm -hmm. so which was a similar ca catch so yeah so something got to do with the trajectory but catches uh, these kind of catches should not be dropped yeah, i think uh, we are we are finding patterns in what's not a pattern uh, yeah <laughs> <laughs> it's just uh, just poor fielding and we need to get better and uh, yeah and the last question to you um, at the start of this series we told that indian bowling is kind of inexperienced compared to the great batting lineup uh, that england has um, something that you want to in general talk about this uh, bowling unit uh, how they have fared against them in three matches uh, it's uh, the bowling is still inexperienced in that perspective but uh, Yes, I think uh, we have made some good comebacks. Uh, uh, Prasid Krishna in his first game, uh, like we saw how he went for runs and then he could come back. Uh, uh, and we talked about it how the 50 over format helps in these uh, things. Uh, uh, Krunal Pandya also, uh, like yes, he also gave some runs, but he has been okay. He's been good. Um, I think we are okay in that. Kul, I would have uh, loved to see Kuldeep uh, come out better, but uh, mm. I think Kuldeep with more experienced uh, <laughs> that I think he was uh, uh, he just uh, went uh, everywhere. So that was a sad part. Uh, Shardul Thakur has been great. Bhuvi has been outstanding, but Bhuvi carries that experience with him. Uh, I think um, overall, if you see, we have matched uh, uh, like uh, we have played our best in terms of uh, controlling the english side although uh, they are opposite team is a world class team so you know they are they go with that uh, all out format like just go bonkers at uh, the indian team so um, overall we have done uh, we have tried our best but uh, we can always try better yeah uh, there's always a good point to me uh, this uh, this you. i want to add a point about virat kohli here uh, with probably uh, we don't get to see him uh, talking with bowlers or uh, it's just animated all the times but uh, there has to be something which he will express in the dressing room or on the field which we are not shown 
and uh, with such an exper- inexperienced bowling attack and leading uh, us to yeah. win all th- all the series is a commendable job so he has to be given the right credits at the right time and and uh, let's not forget that uh, these were uh, kind of flat tracks there was no mm-hmm. much assistance to the bowlers so we have to be more uh, more sympathetic to the bowlers here yeah. they have done a good job and yes, I'm sure the England batsmen the- also are enough sympathetic to our <laughs> bowlers. It appears anyway. Uh, gentlemen, let's wind up today's discussion um, and this ODI series. Uh, simple question: a moment you will take from this series in forward from now. One moment to cherish. Uh, you guys get to pick. Uh, Vignesh, you can start with you. No, uh, for me it is. It was the Rishabh Pant uh, comeback in the in the first Test match. For me, after going, uh, you know, almost four down, uh, we, uh, you know, Rishabh Pant and Chidesh Pujara, you know, just just from nowhere, brought us to a respectable total. Yes, we didn't lose a Test match, but to show that fight and determination uh, when when your your backs are against the wall, that I think was for me the moment that that sort of. Spurred the Indian team on, I guess, uh, to to clinch all three series. So yeah, for me that that moment, uh, Rishabh Pant and Chidesh Pujara innings was was for me the moment of the of the two. Okay, Vishal. Um, for this ODI series, the way uh, both how both the teams uh, uh, counterattacked each other and responded to the challenges posted to them. So we had uh, after the first game, we had England. Uh, uh, we had a lot of people asking questions on England's approach. England came storming back in the second ODI, and suddenly everyone started questioning India's approach. And India adapted a bit, and the third ODI was like there was a lot of ebbs and flows. So two quality sides playing, and there were a lot of quality uh, uh, on show. So that's something which I would take, and I cherished watching the series. So yeah. Mm-hmm. Abhi, so I, I would uh, love to call this a comeback series, like. Whenever a team is done and dusted, uh, they come back. So, and also not just the team, uh, individuals also. Uh, when they were out, you give them an opportunity; they used to come back. But one uh, defining moment for me, uh, of course, Vignesh mentioned about Rishabh Pant. I mean that uh, uh, sweep or river sweep to uh, Anderson. Yes. I don't think uh, I would see it anytime soon. In any uh, format, by anyone. Rishabh Pant will do it next match. (laughs) (laughs) Ani. For me, uh, it is an emotional moment between the two uh, Pandya brothers, uh, uh, especially after Krunal uh, uh, scoring a 50 on his debut. I think uh, that kind of uh, touched the heart. Okay. All right, uh, gentlemen, that is neatly summarized. This was the point where I would have actually mentioned the umpiring, but I think I gave it enough justice uh, already. Um, I wish to end this series of uh, Simon Go Back itself uh, uh, by telling when the cricket is so good, it gets viewers on. And when viewers come on, you hear a lot of chatter for everything that is on the field and off the field. And the chatter off the field even this series, in even this uh, show that we are putting for you, is a symbol of how much uh, this cricket uh, tour has been for for cricket fans world over. Um, it's been a blessing to have watched this as well as to cover it with uh, with my friends here. And uh, um, stay safe. We will join you very very soon in uh, all the action that is going to come in our franchise format of uh, in, in Premier League. Um, with that being said, I, I bid you guys farewell. Wait for our special series uh, covering each one of the teams. Thank you. Bye. And you can officially announce uh, Simon went back. <laughs> 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 <laughs>